Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So today I had an opportunity to go check out some amazing cars. I am talking about a collection of Ferraris that were here in New York at Hudson Yards. And the first thing that I saw was the Ferrari Puro Sang, or the Pura Sangre, or whatever that translated. It translates into pure blood in Italian. And uh, it is Ferrari's new entry into the SUV market. The same brief step that Porsche took over the course of maybe 15 years ago with the introduction of the Cayenne. And you see what that has done for the company in terms of revolutionizing how many sales they do annually. Ferrari has now entered the market. Uh, I know Enzo Ferrari would be turning in his grave, but um, this was a brave new step for Ferrari in order for them to sort of grow as a automobile manufacturer and less as an exclusive sports car manufacturer. I mean, it hasn't tarnished the reputation for Porsche in any way, shape, or form, because if we look at Porsche, they're still known for their RS models. Those are still the aspirational vehicles that they're moving for. Yeah, I don't see the Puro Sang having any damaging effects to to the to the Ferrari brand. So I think I think uh, I think Ferrari is safe for the most part. The other cars that we got to see were the hypercars, like the SP1 or the SP2, the Monza. That thing was unbelievable. It had a beautiful color scheme, and it definitely was a sight to behold. And then you had this gray monstrosity, but I mean that in a good way. Uh, it's not my favorite design, but I think the uh, I think the design was definitely polarizing, and it's something that looks better in person than it does in pictures. And that car is the gray one. But then I started to bend the corner, and then I started to look for other cars that for that I knew were going to be there. You know, the the holy grail cars, like the five cars that everybody knows in terms of Ferrari's legacy. And I'm not talking about the Le Mans winner because the Le Mans winner, seeing that in person, was amazing. Seeing it with all the road debris from Le Mans from France, um, seeing some of the race cars, the Formula One race cars, and Austin is a week at Formula One, so that's exciting. And then seeing the 166 Double M Barquetta, I think that's one of my favorite cars that was there because that thing is absolutely beautiful. It is a work of art. It is basically the vision for what Enzo Ferrari had wanted his company to be. He wanted beautiful Italian design, coach-built work that was functional on the track, but also functional on the street. And then, of course, you start with the 288 GTO. The 288 GTO was a car that looks a lot like the 308 or the 328 in period, but it was a little bit better. You know, it had like the heart of a purebred super Ferrari. You know, that's the car that was the successor to like the 250 GTO. It's like the modern day Ferrari. It's, it's really that car and it is really special to see in person. And it embodied everything that was 80s design, like very, uh, you know, you had like the, you had like the inlets on the side for, for additional cooling. You had the low profile design, the wedge shaped design that was, that was nice to look at during the 1980s. Still beautiful to look at today. And then you move on to the next generation with the F40. And the F40 is special because to many, this is considered the greatest sports car of all time. The F40 is a vehicle that pretty much is the final vehicle that Enzo Ferrari commissioned. It was a vehicle that he looked at, saw, approved, and he signed off on before his untimely, well, he did live to about 90 years old. I mean, the guy did live a full life and he did live an awesome life, but this was the final car that he approved. And I think that's a, that's a very special thing. And then the car that is considered to be my favorite, I have to say that my favorite is the F50. The F50 is a car from my childhood. I remember it just being so futuristic, very simplistic on the interior. It just looked absolutely incredible. Just a beautiful design throughout the inside, throughout the interior cabin. It's just like a minimalistic approach. Everything that I like, like there's no air conditioning, there's no radio, just a gear shift lever, a steering wheel, um, a carbon tub, which at the time McLaren was 
you know, they got all the credit for, for having the, the carbon tub, but Jaguar, the extra, the Jaguar XJ220 at the time also had a carbon tub. The McLaren F1 also had a carbon tub. Those two cars were considered the fastest of their times, and those were the speed record kings. But with the F50, the reason that it got a bad rap in period was because it wasn't breaking any speed records. It wasn't even faster than the Ferrari F40. But in terms of design, they say it was not as pretty as the F40. So the F40 sort of holds that, that nostalgia for many Ferrari purists and Ferrari enthusiasts. And for the longest time, the market had hurt the Ferrari F50. And they were not selling for very, for very much money. Today, I think people have caught on that they're like, you know what, this car is special. So now it's going for astronomical amounts. And it's finally getting the credit that it deserves because in an age like today where any car can achieve speed, you know, you have Toyota Camrys that are faster than, than my Porsche 911. I mean, speed doesn't really matter. It's about how you're getting to that speed. It's about the, it's about the experience of getting to the speed. It's about the process. Um, so you know, you don't look at a 356 and you're not trying to break lap records at the Nürburgring. You're trying to get in a Porsche 356 for the fun and the excitement and for the thrill. And for the challenge to see if you're actually a capable driver because everything is analog. You have to actually have the skill in order to execute. So I think that's why these cars are special. And I think that's why people are finally seeing that the F50 was special because it was a V12 with an insane amount of horsepower. It was a gated shift manual car and it's got a really cool design that has aged very well so the f50 was there and i was very excited to see it because that's one of my favorite cars from my childhood and then we got to see the enzo ferrari which i think is a spectacular car it is japanese designed uh from the pininfarina factory cool design it had the upward opening doors which i thought were fantastic in the early 2000s uh, one of my favorite cars of all time, and to see one in person was great. And then you had a silver car, the Ferrari La Ferrari, and seeing that in person, being the first hybrid supercar, the only one in the pack with a V12, because the 918 Spider and the McLaren P1 both have uh, V8s. So seeing this V12 with the hybrid assist, pretty much the only one that exists out there, and it, you know, being a very special car, it's kind of cool. So I was very happy to see it, very happy to experience it. And Ferrari just threw this in the middle of Manhattan for no reason. So I'm really happy it happened. So if you enjoyed what I had to say about my commentary about the new Ferraris, well, new to me Ferraris, the new to my view Ferraris in Hudson Yards, please leave a comment down below and I will talk to you on the next one. I'll see you later. And I'll next time you see me, I'll be in Austin at Formula One.